All right, I think we're just about ready to go. So welcome. I'm going to take this um, uh, this uh, slide off my uh, off my computer. Perfect. So we're ready to go. So Vita, can you say something so you get on the screen? Sure, nice to be here and uh, welcome everybody and namaste. Perfect. So I'm gonna introduce um, Gita Desai. Uh, she's a filmmaker and a very successful filmmaker who does amazing films. And at the end of this, um, our webinar, you will have an opportunity to be able to um, purchase her film if you would like to, or purchase any one of the three of her trilogy. Um, she's done one on Ayurveda, one on yoga, and one on music, and they're all amazing. So they would really be something wonderful for you to have in your library. So um, Gita always keeps telling me she's not a scholar. <laughs> I think she is a scholar in her own right in terms of making the movie and all the amazing people um, that she's met over the years uh, doing these three different films. Um, I've been uh, a yoga teacher for the last 20 years and I've been a yoga therapist for the last 14 years. And I think a lot, one, something that people don't really understand is that when yoga <clears throat> becomes therapeutic, as in terms of, of yoga therapy, it actually becomes one of the disciplines of Ayurveda. So the last interview that we did and this interview are very well tied together because the two um, sciences of yoga and Ayurveda are sister sciences and they work perfectly together in terms of healing the individual and helping to heal the world. So Gita, do you, would you like to say something before I show the first trailer? Um, so we are, what we are going to watch is a six, uh, my first effort, which is, was Yoga Anvil. Uh, that documentary was released in 2004 and I started making it in 2002. So the, the genesis or the impetus behind making that film, that particular documentary was um, very quickly once I started practicing the Hatha Yoga, the you know, physical yoga, going to workshops and you know, studios and just observing that people in the West are given a very small uh, aspect or a view of yoga, which was mostly the physical aspects, you know? And it wasn't their fault. That was the way they, the, the promoters of yoga could promote it very easily because it's a very physically oriented society and they loved it. And along with it, there were side effects of calmness and good health, etc. But the, the marketing machine was showing it as if asanas and you know, the postures are what yoga is. So people I felt were building their bridges, their homes on the bridge. Asana is just a bridge towards a much higher goal. And I, I felt bad when I watched people buying hundreds of books and quite uh, curious, but quite lost. So I thought, well, let me make a documentary, not write another one more of the thousands of books that have been written. Let me make a film because people tend to watch a lot of uh, screen time was getting, uh, you know, increasing by the day. Readership is consistently going down, you know. And so I brought a film together which gave an overview of the origins, the philosophy, the branches, how it came to the West, therapeutic, the biographies of the great yogis, hot yogis and the, why the different branches of the, you know, where is Bhagavad Gita and where is Patanjali in relationship to this and that, you know, there was so much to sort for the Western mind. And so it's a textbook film again that I brought together. So graphs and maps and timelines and interviews with the greatest yogis and scholars so that I would uh, sure that people sit in their seats and watch the whole film. So it has become a great resource for teacher training programs across the world now. 
but the idea of behind making it was what I just uh, expressed. So that's it, uh, Erica. That's all I wanted to say as an introduction. Well, thank you very much for your introduction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put on the uh, trailer for Yoga Unveiled. And then um, I'm going to ask a few questions. At the end of this evening, you as an audience will ha also have an opportunity to um, ask each of some questions. So I'll just get the trailer up for you so you can have a watch of it. Hold on, I need it to be bigger. Oh, this, I don't know if this one will get bigger. Let's see. Ah, there we go. So here's the trailer for Yoga Unveiled by uh, Gita Desai. The consciousness disciplines are saying the mind has these dimensions of positive experience yeah. that can be cultivated that go way beyond neutral or changing eternal bliss. That is our true nature. We can't hear it. <laughs> Yoga in a nutshell is to keep the entire, the external, internal body clean, pure, sanctified, so that the mind flows without any barrier. To most practitioners in the West, yoga is merely a series of postures that offer physical benefits. This view confines the yoga experience to only what occurs on the mat. That aspect of yoga is just one of the thinnest slice in the entirety of yoga. I consider yoga to be the oldest spiritual tradition in the world. Soon there was a revolution in the concept of Indian civilization. Excavation at these sites brought to light the existence of the highly developed Indian civilization, which pushed back our knowledge of India's past by another 2,000 years. The same people who created this yogic tradition created a civilization that when you look at it today, you are astounded by its accomplishments. The yoga practitioners of today have only to gaze over their shoulders. Within view is an unbroken stream of creativity that connects them to ancient India. All of these yoga systems, the goal is realization of the innermost self, uh, whether, it, whether that's called Atman or Purusha, um, there's various names for it. The practice of yoga is the practice of coming back to ourselves and rediscovering ourselves, and in fact, coming to love ourselves and understanding that we're not separate from the totality. So we are all nested within larger and larger spheres of wholeness that extend out as far as the mind can extend itself, which as far as I know is infinite. Our goal and purpose of yogic practices and Ayurvedic balanced lifestyle is to have all prana available at any given moment to direct it directly up to Sahasra, to the highest chakra. This flow of energy translates into dynamic stimulus, nothing but skillful action. To the Western shores, came many yogis in the hope of imparting their spiritual wealth, but with little impact. However, one man opened America's eyes to a new way of thinking. It wasn't until Swami Vivekananda came in 1893 to speak at the Parliament of Religions. He was such an inspiring speaker that he put, in a way, the whole country, the educated country, on fire. The physical yoga that the West has embraced can be traced back 
to the single-minded effort of one Brahmin yogi, Tirumalai Krishnamacharya. Krishnamacharya had great influence in the way yoga is practiced in the United States. Four of his main students, Iyengar, Tabi Joyce, Deskachar, his son, Indra Devi, had incredible wide influence on introducing yoga to our culture. He took postures out of obscurity, researched and refined them to perfection and brought them to the public stage. People learn to relax deeply. They are different out there in the world. Among all yoga masters, BKS Iyengar has played the most significant role in the introduction and spread of yoga in the West. I was born with the gift of illnesses one after another from birth. So those gifts of unfortunate ill health made me to take to yoga. <laughs> Sometimes I'm asked, what is the point of yoga? It was created 5,000 years ago. How can it be relevant today? My answer is always the same. It was created by human beings for human beings. The human condition truly has not changed. Despite the cutting edge, quite dramatic benefits it could provide patients using new technology, it only further reinforce the realization that high-tech interventions can only bring so much to a patient who's ill. Yoga doesn't bring you a sense of peace and health and well-being. It's not like taking Valium. Rather, it helps you quiet down your mind and body so you can experience what your true nature is, really, which is to be peaceful until we disturb it. For me, yoga allows a wonderful integration of the body and the mind. Carl Jung said that Western psychology has not even begun to uh, understand the depths of a tradition like yoga. So Western psychology is in its infancy. Yoga is very old and therefore has gathered all kinds of information that we don't understand yet. If we practice, we begin to see more and more of just how beautiful and integrated and powerful it can be. And also, I think, if time will be shown to provide very measurable benefits. For example, allowing bone density to increase in older people, especially women. Perhaps influencing how your kidneys function. Definitely having an impact on blood pressure control. Maybe influencing cholesterol metabolism. Things that we don't have quite enough data yet, but we have very alluring tidbits of information that make it seem like it might play a wonderful role as a general health preserving therapy. And it's cheap. You can do it yourself. It's hard to beat that as a general public policy wellness tool. So if we could master mind, we would have untold worlds open up to us. And yoga provides us that uh, promise. <laughs> So I don't think you could see that. What I'd like to do is at the end, I'll bring it up again and see if we can um, actually get people to see it. Um, I, I've seen it many times now, so I think it's fabulous. But the, I'd like you to just speak a little bit. I mean, you spoke about kind of some of the inspiration um, for making Yoga Unveiled. Mm -hmm. did, you, um, did you learn some things that you didn't know from speaking to the great masters? And it's kind of a privilege when you think that some people aren't around anymore that 
there's a record of um, some of the things that they said to you. Yes, yes. All three films uh, are archival, especially uh, the first two. And it's been so many years, Eric. I, I started interviewing back in 2002. So this is a film that's ever green and ever fresh in terms of its orientation and the, the content uh, creation, but it's uh, been a while. And I've been through the other two, <clears throat> the processes of making the other two multi-hour documentaries, Raga Unveiled on Indian classical music and uh, Ayurveda Unveiled, which was released in 2000. Uh, 20. So it's been a while, but absolutely every time I sat in front of the masters and the greats, you know, <laughs> the humility came through the, their commitment to, to their practices, their own uh, sadhanas and their own commitment to uh, practicing what they preached, you know, was very evident. So that was definitely there in the learning about the subject matter, the tradition, of course, happened as I was going through the making of it. So, and I did not come from a film background either. So there was a lot of learning from that end as well. I had never made films. I was a homemaker before that, but my passion was uh, unparalleled, unmatched, my physical uh, prowess, that what it takes to make documentaries was all in place. My kind husband funded them. So I had the finance, which is very important when you're making independent films. So uh, the vision was very clear. I had to educate the world about the true essence of yoga and the power of yoga and give them a, a, some semblance of what this tradition, what this, um, this great profound you know, art and science is uh, really from beginning to end, as much as man knows. Give some uh, clarity was what I wanted, but in a film form, in a film on a medium. You know, there well, are many- your, your service definitely comes through in both the films that I watched. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, all three films are textbook films because it was made for from that objective. So once you know what you want as an end result, you work towards it. Yes. So you can literally turn the pages of the film and feel like you're going through a book. And that's what teacher training programs are doing now because teachers have realized it cuts their work into half when they have them watch it beforehand or during the training. Because people love to watch uh, real live uh, masters that are no more or are around and they would never have access to all these kinds of, uh, for example, when I interviewed John Kabat-Zinn, um, there's not a single interview of him. He's become so popular. The MBSR, Mindfulness Based Stress Reduction Program is in every hospital and I believe the insurance companies also pay for that now. Um, and when I filmed him, he was pretty well known, but uh, nobody had ever uh, heard his back end story about how, why he did what he did. And I was in his backyard in the garden, sitting with him for over an hour and a half. And he gave, it's in the film, but so that's what I meant is nobody had heard BKS Iyengar speak about his childhood and you know his journey. Um, and Dr. Georg Feuerstein and the greats, really. So uh, it was a really uh, Dean Ornish, Dr. Oz. Nobody had ever filmed him talking about yoga, how he introduced it at the New York Presbyterian, you know, the cardiac surgery departments. Yes, so, they were much ahead of their time. Yes, yes. The North Americans that uh, embraced it. Yeah. I think it's also important, you know, I, I run into this quite frequently, having been a yoga teacher for 20 years, that um, people think it's a religion, as opposed to a philosophical system. And I think that creates some diversity. So I think it's important for people to start to understand that both yoga and Ayurveda are philosophical systems. One of the seven philosophical systems in um, in India, you know, yeah. a lot of it's in Sankhya philosophy, um, as opposed to being a religion, so that it doesn't 
separate people anymore that it brings people together if they understand that yeah india is a complex uh, land a complex culture a, a complex history because it's had a very deep uh, you know centuries uh, long uninterrupted uh, traditions and you know they were very very peaceful at at one point it was the invasions that really rattled them but they never went out to invade and they were very very much into looking for the inner you know well being of you know everything was towards this whole journey of how to find the maximum potential in each one of us and be liberated in a in a nutshell so right. that was the impetus and to towards that everybody worked so uh, but so it's hard to understand that the that everything is intertwined when one says yoga is religion well you know yoga was never away from day to day life it wasn't that you went into a studio and did <laughs> the right. yoga it's crazy everywhere you see there's yoga the union with the higher power microcosm committing the macrocosm whether how do you and ayurveda is everywhere because the sages the design grand design was not to disempower and say we know it we'll show you how to do it you have to be with us or you have to pay us or whatever their whole mission was how do we make the society each individual empowered and so they brought yoga into the simplest ways of life whether it's cooking parenting cleaning your house setting up the ambience of your self as well as your environment how do you treat the animals the nature everywhere there was this union uni union with the oneness you know you were never like me the individualism was broken down as much as they could to keep us real and to protect each other protect the environment protect your home protect your child the older so then of course the the words the vocabulary can be found in a scriptural religious scripture also in a yogic scripture sanskrit was the mother of all traditions so people who are ignorant have very small minds towards what the world is don't want to know or are very inclusive and afraid insecure because yoga can be extremely uh, rattling for a lot of people because it empowers each individual yes yeah. they don't need you they don't need to buy things they know how to take care of themselves then capitalism is you know facing a big challenge so there are many reasons Yeah. If you look at the Yoga Sutras, the first two are all about your own ethical presence in the world and the physical um, expectations. So, with those first two um, pieces of the eight limbs, it makes it a very much a part of Ayurveda too, not just of yoga. If you read the Yoga Sutras, absolutely, absolutely. Well, both spring, both were the architects were the same. the sages the purpose was the same to empower and to show people how to be uh, uh, you know experience their fullest potential and if you look at ayurveda it was how to teach people not to get sick in the first place so that they can find the union the yoga which is the higher uh, achievement you know which would be higher to find uh, that uh, level of uh, fulfillment etc but before you could meditate and sit you had to be healthy the body had to be healthy yes and clean and disease free so one led into the other there is no way yoga and ayurveda can be apart no way it's just that the western you know the entry into the western and in, even in india people don't not uh, too many understand the interrelated interrelated uh, you know uh, aspect yes, yoga has been here a lot longer than ayurveda has in north america too i think it will get yeah. into it never came along because they couldn't sell all that but they could sell the physicality very quickly yeah, so right. everything else was dropped and 
go after the yoga mat. That's where the money is. And that's where yeah. that became yoga and Lululemon pants and whatever, whatever, you know. Yeah. I mean, I used to own yoga studios and, and I believe that some people come for the physical aspect. Yeah. If they stay around long enough, they learn Absolutely. the other pieces, which is nice because maybe that's yeah. the only way we'll get North Americans in is by at yeah. first offering the physical asana practice and the rest will come. You said it right. It's in the film as well. Absolutely. Credit where credit is due because that was the way to uh, introduce it. Absolutely. So, yeah. but... The problem was that grew, that became the, the word for yoga. Yes. And not only that, that became so diluted, that became so commercialized. Even hot yoga is spiritual or has a very higher order, the authentic hot yoga, physical yeah. yoga. But look where it was taken. So that's the problem. And, and the... the uh, students were or whoever was in their studios or they were never given the higher uh, possibilities they were never shown that that ultimate you know ultimately meditation and going inwards is where you should be leading to you know they were never shown that path most mm -hmm. of them but as you just said a lot of them it's natural that they go towards that 30 i in my opinion experience because I've been all over the world with my screenings and talks and all I've noticed at least 30 percent on their own want higher um, you know they want to go into the deeper dimensions of yoga it's just a yearning because everything starts relaxing you know you stretch the muscles it, everything starts calming down the breath goes down the heart rate slows down you feel calmer your health probably gets better, even from simple asanas. Um, then what? You know, that's there's a yearning that you want to be silent. You want to go inwards and find the deeper uh, aspects of yoga. Absolutely. Yeah, true. So it's it's all good, but it became quite ugly. The commercialization. It is right now. You know, truly. True. Go to yoga and this yoga and that yoga. I mean. Okay, let me put one of the promos on that, yes. hold on. You have to make sure they can see it, I don't know. I know, I don't know what happened. I'm just gonna have to. Sure. Um, I could see it. Oh, you, you could? could? Some people could see it? Yes, I could. This is Laura speaking. Okay. We could. I could see it too. Yeah, I could see it too. So let's just have a look at this one if I can. Where did it go? No. I see it. Yeah, I'm just going to try and put it on a full screen. This one is um, on YouTube. I couldn't get it up any other way. So from Ayurveda and Vilto. Yeah, this is an, but it, it goes very well with. Um, Sure, sure, sure. Sorry. The yoga one. Okay. Indian civilization saw the spirit in everything. India's spirituality was life embracing and life transforming. It saw matter as the, the veil or the form of spirit and spirit as the essence, meaning, purpose, truth of all matter. And the bridging of these two as its highest purpose, as the meaning of life itself. And therefore, in whatever field that they took up, it was with the aim of going all the way through to the deepest spiritual, essential truth and principle and meaning, and to draw that out into the widest, richest, most detailed expression in beauty, in power, in harmony, in knowledge. Muller who said that the Western man has retired into the capsule of his head and it is in only India that the whole body lives when 
people are walking barefoot on the earth, how can they not be alive? So I think that one went very well with the yoga piece also. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a very important statement that he man, made where man has moved into the capsule of his mind. Um, you know, I see that frequently in uh, both my clinical practice and at my yoga studio. But you know what I also see is I see people wanting to come out of that capsule. Yeah. And I think COVID has even expanded that um, even a little bit more in terms of us getting connect connected to a higher self, to a consciousness, to who we truly are, which is, you know, what Ayurveda was meant to do. It was meant to take us back to who we truly are, just like yoga was. And so how do you feel about that whole encapsulation of the mind in the North American world? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. No, you know, intuition, things like intuition or being just being in nature or experiencing and seeing pleasure in the simple truths has, is out of the window now. Everything has to be researched, everything has to be proven, everything has to be, but at the same time, you know, there is no proof for things like love and ego and, you know, these are abstract terms that even the Western uh, vocabulary has and there's no proof. But yet when it comes to these Eastern traditions like Ayurveda, yoga, etc., you know, where's the proof, where's the proof? The proof is in the putting in, the proof is in practicing. I mean, research was done, as I said in my last talk, uh, Erica, I will say it till I'm blue in the face. <laughs> research happened centuries ago. I love that. The rishis, the sages did not present this to the society, to the humanity without completely, how, how come it's so alive and so unchanged after centuries and you know, the principles haven't changed. No. The medic, even the herbs in Ayurveda, even the precepts, even the asanas, breath work, nothing has changed. How come? And in the Western sphere, everything changes every five or 10 years. And yet we don't question their research. It's how humbug, it's research is money. I mean, it's needed, yes, but try to practice it and you'll that you will be the, the model you'll be the research result you know right. because rishi munis rishis the sages use their own bodies a lot of times as their laboratories and they got hurt they probably were damaged themselves too till they refined the truths and the precepts and the, the practices so we should be bowing to this and not putting our millions of dollars into research. We should just practice simple measures of, you don't have to do complex things to get uh, great results. Yoga and Ayurveda are about simplicity, about where you don't have to pay a penny. You, it's all in your home, it's all in your body. You can do your downward dog and you'll be lifting your own weight and you'll be stretching your own muscle. You don't need to go anywhere. You have salt in the in your cabinet, and you have a little neti pot, and you have warm water. Cleanse your nasal passages. You won't have COVID. You won't be afflicted. You won't have asthma. There's breath work. So you see, it's so simple, but yet everybody wants to run after research and money. They want to spend money. We have been taught, though, that it, the more complicated something is, the better it is. You know, we've definitely been trained that Capitalism. way. The capitalism has taught that the, the lawyers, the doctors, the accountants, the money, I mean, talk, 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 talk. Silence yeah. is powerful. Maybe we should become silent so we get answers from within what we should do with our lives and our problems. Silence is the springboard to change and nobody's teaching us silence. They are, everybody's talking away. Well, I think mother nature's now teaching us that by what she's done. Yeah. And it's an interesting experiment because- At what cost? Discomfort. <laughs> At what cost? Yeah, but you can see the discomfort in people from silence, you know, yes. having to retreat yes. um, is a normal part of a yoga practice or an Ayurvedic practice yet. Um, in the world that we've lived in, I think that maybe people will wake up that it, maybe it has some very therapeutic value for them. I'm hoping that anyway. Yes, absolutely. And that's why I say to Ayurveda, 
practitioners, yoga teachers, that you have so much power to make a difference in the in people. So much power if you unleash the the real, you know, uh, gems of the traditions. And, and there's another very interesting piece from my perspective is that when uh, when we look at yoga uh, as being an Ayurvedic practitioner, and because I'm also a yoga therapist, which doesn't happen that often yet in Ayurveda, mm -hmm. that asanas are, can be specific to the doshas and can be specific to the vikritis, to the imbalances, to heal yeah. that stuff okay. in the body. And it's just it's just a piece that's starting to bubble up and that people are starting to understand which I find fabulous. Yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, if you think about the damage that's happening through the warm, hot, hot studios, one size fits all. How many right. women are pre-menopausal or menopausal or hot flashes? Doesn't matter, it's one size fits all, whatever, 100 degrees or 105, whatever the temperature. Yeah. And then what, you know, you really throw those the imbalances out of the, through the roof, you know, Pitta. You know. Well, we feel the same way about food. If you look at that piece from yeah. an Ayurvedic perspective, you know, we just think, oh, kale's good for everybody, right? It, we, we don't have that understanding yet of the individuality of the human yeah. experience and how it interacts with the environment. So, sure, yeah. surely. But, you know, the traditions are here for people to take advantage from, so. And right. they're universal. They were designed for the entire world, whenever they were. You know, the words, if you, if you read the Sanskrits, um, some of the words are humanity in Sanskrit or manav jati, you know, for everybody, universal. Yes. And, the, and for the animals and plants and mankind. <laughs> Well, and, and hopefully that, you know, my hope is that Ayurveda will start to help save the earth also, not just humanity, but the mother earth that we have really raped and pillaged for so long. Yeah, if, if uh, Ayurveda doesn't become as commercial as yoga. So. Yeah, no, I hope not. Which, is, yes, there are signs. There'll be a piece of it and, and there'll be just a traditional piece also. And hopefully over the years, it will all meld into, um, you know, especially when we have organizations like the Ayurvedic Association or NAMA, you know, it, they're, we're all doing really good work to be able to um, yeah. get the true word out there for sure. Yeah, and the true word is that I'm as healthy as my neighbor is. I'm as healthy as Erica is and everybody in this box. And, right, and as healthy as the earth is. So exactly. So we need to really uh, empower everybody. So yeah. really. Okay, I'll put on, let's see if I can do it right this time. <laughs> I'll get another one of your pieces, hold on. nascent of the alternative medicine program at Columbia Presbyterian was a recognition that despite the cutting edge, quite dramatic benefits we could provide patients using new technology, it only further reinforced the realization that high tech interventions can only bring so much to a patient who's ill. And to totally reverse that illness, in fact, to bring wellness to that patient, you have to go beyond what Western high-tech medicine can provide. So that synchronicity occurs when you take advantage of therapies that are used in other parts of the world. And for me, yoga, at both a personal level and a professional level, was the best therapy to provide to my patients. For me as an individual, it was wonderful because my surgeons were always hunched over, operating all the time. It allowed me to stay limber, flexible, strong, 
and increase my endurance. Back in 2003. <laughs> he was a different gentleman at the time, I think. <laughs> yeah. It, it was a really nice piece, though, you know, just him talking about that really allopathic medicine can only go so far. Right. And even at that point, he acknowledged that those Eastern sciences could go a lot further than, you know, what they were trained to do. And um, I hope that word just keeps getting out there. You know, I'm surprised it was said that long ago and it hasn't had more of an influence. I mean, it has had an influence, but. This is exactly what uh, you were asking or, or the other clip talked about being in the head all the time, capsule of the head. So you, they can't see these uh, kinds of practices as being, you know, powerful as well. You know, it's, right. it's research-based, everything. Whoops, sorry. Yeah, shall we take some questions, uh, Erica? I don't know if there are or... Yeah, we have about 10 minutes left. Surely. Um, I had one more video, but we're fine. I mean, we, we, I think people get the idea and the videos are quite similar. So yes, I'd love it if... Uh, is there anybody that has questions? If you do have a question, you can either put it in the chat box which is probably one of the easiest ways, or um, you can um, just take your uh, microphone off and ask the question and then please put yourself on mute again. Everyone's saying thank you to you for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's been a pleasure, always. There is a question, Vinita, she's asking, are there any plans to make further documentaries? Oh, okay, okay. Um, no, what happened with Ayurveda Unveiled was we had about 16 theatrical screenings and more planned across the country and North and then Europe as well. And along came the pandemic, so everything was on hold. And with, the th with these three films, I uh, no sooner did I finish one, I started embarked on the next one. So the last 15, 16 years have been one after another, really finishing the multi-hour documentaries. You know, we self-funded, so the teams are small. I was working a lot, uh, you know, traveling and making these films and editing took so long. So I haven't really had much time to market these films because my objective is to get these films in the hands of as many people as possible across the world, especially so, teacher trainees. And also this is where my time will go now. Um, so I know I don't have any plans. I would love to make lots more, but no, not yet. So could you just give your website um, for them to purchase and then I'll type it in. Sure. Unveiledtrilogy.com. Okay. All three film in information is there. Unveiledtrilogy.com. And you can purchase them in DVD format as well as the stream of, you know, video on demand uh, format as well. Yes, that's a nice option that you give people for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a question here that says, what was the biggest challenge in making these documentaries? Uh, there were no challenges. I mean, it's funny uh, if I say this, but truly these were, if you believe in all this again, you know, if you're in your head, you won't. If you're in the capsule of your head, you <laughs> will understand what I'm about to say. But all three films, there is no doubt in my heart and mind, and a lot of people feel that way, were meant to be. I was the chosen operator or instrument to make them. But the way they came together with my minimum experience or zero experience of filmmaking, first of all, uh, not being a yoga teacher, not being a musician, not being a scholar, not being a famous filmmaker, why would Dr. Oz and 90% of the people I interviewed were by cold calls. I didn't know anybody. Why would they say yes to me, first of all? So that was one very big question. 
And then the way they came together and took a life, the, the Yoganville was on PBS for three years. They say that the pile of applicants are like two, 3,000 and I just tried on my own and I got it through. So uh, that was remarkable. So these films did not pose any challenges, really big challenges. The only challenges later on during editing, which I think all films, such heavy films, which are four, five, six, you know, three hours long, do face our technical issues, which I did not have to face, but my team, my editors and my sound editors and graphics and all that stuff, which was nuisance value to it, but they sorted it out. So, but in terms of getting everybody, my crew, my, the people I worked for, everybody delightful and the um, travel was easy. There were no, no thing, no, uh, what shall I say? unfortunate happenings or nothing. Health was at, it, at my peak, I was. I didn't even have a sniffle or a cold on these month long marathons that we did. You know, we would be traveling. I would have a 14, 15, 16 hour day in India when, we, when the filming was going on. Right. And dusty roads and taxis and everything. You know, I was doing everything on my own. Uh, it's synchronistic. Pardon, synchronicity. It yeah. yeah, it was meant to be. It was graced. These films were, the projects were graced. There's no other way to look at them. Wonderful. There's, a, there's another question. There's a Kundalini teacher that wonders if you're interested mm -hmm. in being interviewed um, for a teacher train, a yoga teacher training. Absolutely. And I just Absolutely. asked her to put her email address in there and then I will give it to you. Sure. And you can put it in privately if you'd like to. Um, and um, then I'll make sure Gita get, gets it. Thank you. And where are they based? You can undo uh, your microphone. I'd love to talk to you. Hi, Gita. How are you? My name is Shaliza, and uh, we are located in Mississauga. We used to have a studio located in Mississauga. Okay. Due to COVID, we uh, closed the studio. It was uh, six years in the works, and um, it's been amazing working online, having the universe and the earth as our international practice now. So we have Kundalini practitioners from all around the world, people who wanna come and do teacher training with us. And the consciousness I believe has now raised um, so many more dimensions um, rather than working just within a community. We are now working within a whole, like the whole world internationally having clients wow. And not just clients, and it's not about that. It's more about the function of the practice and the actual prescription of the Kriyas and even just the way the asanas are, the way to go inward and become aware. So I was wondering if you would be interested in being interviewed for your film as well. Yes, definitely. And we can do something similar as well if you want a little screening event. I do it all the time. During oh, okay. COVID as well on Zoom, and we I'd love to. Great. Okay. Um, the email address is sitting there for you in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. It was really nice to meet you and um, you as well. Um, you're a yoga therapist, so that's amazing. It's uh, wonderful to um, have met you both as well. And um, I'm learning a lot more of the Ayurvedic side um, as being in, from East Indian culture as well, that is very much a part of our culture. So um, learning more and understanding more of that is very fascinating. Thank for you. That, uh, for that, the uh, Ayurveda Anvil is a, a fantastic introduction, start to finish. It's five hours long, but it really shows the uh, true essence of Ayurveda. It takes you into a much of the deeper dimensions and the language of Sanskrit and you know, the biographies, the curative measures, the Guru Shishya Parampara, how the Vaidyas were trained traditionally is all that has been covered. So I hope, sincerely hope everybody gets to watch these films in their entirety. And you'll have to watch them many, many, many times. They are very loaded with wisdom and gems. So every time you watch them, you'll find new information. Um, Erica would... Uh, 
be the right person to comment on that. She's seen it besides. Oh yes, I've watched one of the Ayurveda one three times now. I've only watched the yoga one once, but it's 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 kind of like the practice or the study of Ayurveda. There's so many layers that you can just keep studying and there's more and more to learn all the time in terms of the layers. So your yeah. film is just like that. Yeah, they're very eloquent speakers. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to hear. Yes. I chose them, uh, I chose the people who spoke very well, good communicators, that was a requirement and people who practice what they preached. So that their, when they spoke their voice, their eyes, their skin, everything, you know, it, it jumped out their, their own sadness you know, with conviction so that the listeners would believe them. Subtle, subliminal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions? If not, um, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. Um, it's always a pleasure to have a group of people come and learn something about Ayurveda or yoga or the world that we live in on a daily basis. And so please share it with all the people that you know, you know, let them know what Ayurveda is and then they can take that journey if they'd like to, too. Um, Neelam, do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, I'm happy. I'm very glad that everybody joined and I appreciate your uh, allowing me to, you know, talk to everyone, Neelam Ji and you, and I wish you all very well with your organization. And I hope these events bring more uh, members for you because that's the only way institutions and organization can do these kinds of things. So I hope you get lots of support and maybe we will reconnect uh, sometime later in the year or so with a different angle to the films as well. Yes, for sure. And there's one film left that we haven't, uh, that I haven't seen yet. So for sure. Yeah. We'll yes. And the, all the films are tied with a knot because even the music, Indian classical music was a means to go inwards. You know, it became an art form and an entertainment form, but the roots are exactly where yoga comes from. It is a yoga of the sound. Yeah. So I you know, so architecture in India. So is every single thing yeah. that exists. Yeah. yeah. So it's a beautiful one. Neelam, do you have something? No, I just wanted to thank um, all the, uh, the participants and, uh, of course, uh, Gitaji for bringing this beautiful uh, film as well as sharing your personal wisdom and your experience behind this uh, film. We thank you so much. And um, very maybe another few months' time, we will bring you again for Ayurveda Unveiled and and bring out uh, more some of the aspects that we didn't cover last time. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, so we will definitely look towards that. And uh, of course, uh, uh, this will help us to, it's not just the bringing the members, but it's also creating that awareness that what we are wanting with this organization. So we are wanting not only the Ayurvedic practitioners to join us, but also uh, the enthusiast and especially the yoga practitioners to join us so that uh, they also understand the yama and the niyama of the yoga with the Ayurvedic uh, lifestyle. So that is our purpose. So we are looking forward to connect with more individuals with their like-minded interest in the um, Eastern philosophies. And of course, looking forward for that uh, Raga documentary Mm -hmm. uh, definitely we will feature that and uh, we will have some uh, in another two weeks uh, we will have another webinar so that will also be featured on our Facebook so please look into that and do attend and uh, become a member and connect with us if you have any questions on regarding Ayurveda so we are expecting more and more people to join Ayurvedic Association and bring this uh, movement of Ayurveda awareness ahead in Canada. So thank you, um, Erika, for bringing such a, you know, uh, interest, making 
the program more interesting and bringing out. Uh, You're wonderful, Erica. Yes, very yes. Thank you. It's a very good preparation she has done. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you, Gita Ji. And uh, yeah. I think yeah. it's yeah. time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Namaste, everyone. Join us in two weeks. I don't know if Paul G is here. Paul G is here. Paul G, you would like to say hello to everyone? I don't, I saw him here, but I think it's, he's, he's disappeared. Here he is. Paul, do you want to say hi? Might be muted. No, no he, he's not muted. He's not muted. He walked away from the computer. Okay, everyone, good night. Take care of good yourself. Good night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Be well. Thank you. Vida in California. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.